seen oil prices go up, we've seen oil prices go down. Is this just a natural part of the cycle or are we seeing something a little bit different here? Well, right now, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is expanding their oil production apparatus. They are churning oil out onto the market and they're losing money in the process. This is not the normal cycle of the market. Uh, this is direct manipulation. In the 1980s, the Reagan administration and Brzezinski, they deliberately manipulated the oil prices in order to hurt the Soviet Union. And I believe that today uh, they, are, they are manipulating the oil prices and trying to hurt Russia as well as Venezuela and Iran. So do you think that they're actually getting the intended effect this time around? Well, I was in Caracas during the parliamentary elections recently, and I'll tell you those elections were a direct result of the drop in oil prices. They are trying to cash starve uh, Venezuela, Iran, and Russia. Um, these are all countries that, are, that have a vibrant, independent economy that is based on the public control of natural resources, namely oil and natural gas. And essentially, the goal is to cash starve the government sectors of the economy and create a political crisis. And they have been succeeding in doing that, uh, at least in Venezuela and in other places. Um, it's unfortunate, um, but let's, let's keep in mind, oil is a very, very important resource in the global economy at this time. And if the prices can be manipulated, uh, you can get a political fallout and take out your opponents. So can you mention Saudi Arabia right up the top? And when people think oil, well, you think Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia depends on oil. I mean, it's, it's a country that, I mean, it's bread and butter is oil. How are they being affected by this? And are they the ones manipulating it. This is kind of a suicide for them, really. Well, the, the oil of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is de facto the property of ExxonMobil. Now, that's, that's the biggest Wall Street oil corporation. Uh, that's you know, the Rockefellers, that's Chase Bank, um, and, and they work hand in hand with the CIA. Uh, Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Foundations fund some of the biggest foreign policy think tanks in the United States, and they have a history of, of carrying out strategic geopolitical goals uh, and, and kind of coordinating uh, with the government, and we're seeing that. And it's, it's having an impact on the U.S. economy. I mean, if you look at what's happening on the stock market lately. But, but overall, the goal is to create uh, a crisis in, in Russia and in Venezuela and in Iran. And it's, it's a Walmart scheme. We all know what Walmart does. Walmart comes into a town. They lower their prices. They put all the local businesses out, out of business. They, they, they get rid of their competition. Then they raise the prices back up. And that's what they're doing on a global scale. This is a global Walmart scheme being carried out by ExxonMobil and the CIA. So you're talking about some private interests. You're talking about the CIA here. How does the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which was always kind of teetering, how do they react to this? How do they keep their power? Well, uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has always been just, just a, a client state of Wall Street, right? I mean, you can go back to, to the 1940s when this relationship began. Uh, you know, the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has the fourth largest military budget of any country in the world, and it purchases its weapons almost exclusively from U.S. military contractors. Meanwhile, they sell their oil exclusively to ExxonMobil, which is, you know, the top Wall Street oil corporation. So you can see the relationship there and, and how this all plays out. That's an incredible mind blowing in so many ways. But let's, let's look at the longer term. Are we, like I said, we've seen oil prices go up, we've seen oil prices go down. Where do you think that these corporations and the CIA are in their interest scheme right now? Are we going to see prices keep going down or will they eventually go back up? Well, if you look at what's happening on the stock market right now, there's big problems. Now, they'd like to blame it all on China, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that all kinds of business interests in the U.S. from many different sectors have invested heavily in hydraulic fracking. And because the prices are getting to be so low, at this point, people are not seeing the return on their investment that was expected, and it's causing political problems in the U.S. You can talk about $2 a gallon and all of that, but it's not having a good effect on, on the economy overall. Um, I, I think we're going to see a bigger fallout, and, and basically this, this strategy is not working out in the long term. Uh, other than the Venezuelan elections, it hasn't had the political fallout that was expected in Iran or in Russia, and so I think the strategy is going to come to an end. The economy really can't tolerate these artificially low prices any longer. It's, it's price manipulation and it's not working out and it needs to end.